Hi, and welcome. My name is Karima Edwards, and I'm the owner and principal of Hummingbird Community Cooperation. My firm is a firm that's centered on racial equity, but also community and capacity building for small businesses and small organizations. My partner, Casey Tonnelly, with Beyond Thinking, is not in this space today. I identify as a Black woman. Casey identifies as a white person. So this space is about BIPOC affinity spaces, and they were understanding of the idea that they don't need to be here right now now. So what is a BIPOC affinity space? So during this time I have with you, we're going to discuss what it is, but also why it's important and answer the question, why aren't white folks in BIPOC affinity spaces? So I look forward to walking alongside you as we learn in this video. And I just want to start with a video that I feel like really great at framing why this is important coming from a personal perspective. When you are the only in a room in an organization, in a group of 200 leaders, it's lonely and you feel isolated. And it in that isolation, you have feelings of imposter syndrome where you feel like, should I really be here? Um, and you don't feel, in that isolation, you don't feel support. And so there is something around um, having the, the network and having support that is very enriching and fulfilling. And the germ of the idea, even before Ellen and I talked about it, every quarter, uh, me and uh, three other uh, girlfriends that are in beauty, Black women, would have a quarterly dinner. And we, you know, it would always be difficult to pick a date that everyone was available. But inevitably, after that dinner, we would leave with our head higher, our soul feel filled, we would be ready, you know, to take on our organization. And so the need is uh, to just feel supported and to feel like you're not the only one and that you're not in isolation. I appreciate that video because a lot of it resonates with me. So what is BIPOC? What does that, that phrase mean? So BIPOC, we throw it around a lot of times. You hear it frequently in the media. Folks use it in conversation. But what is it really? So it is an acronym. And the acronym was created to center and build solidarity among people of color. And what the term does, it highlights the experiences that we have as people of color and acknowledges how those experiences relate directly to white supremacy. What this term does is it really shines light and illuminates the injustices that face Black and Indigenous people every day, but while also countering the historic pattern of invisibility for these specific communities. So BIPOC, the acronym stands for Black, Indigenous, and People of Color. And it's a term in the last few years that I know a lot of people have heard more often that we're using, like I mentioned, to build solidarity among people of color. So who are people of color. All people that come from the different diaspora of non-white folks from different backgrounds, different origins, all people, indigenous people as well, identify as people of color. So we are saying that together we're stronger and that's part of what BIPOC means. So now there's the question, what is an affinity space? So an affinity space is really any space where people are drawn together in a way that is meaningful for them. It may not be formal. It may be very informal. It could be held anywhere in a park, in an office. A lot of times now we're having our affinity spaces online and the purpose can be different. It can be to learn and share knowledge. It can be sharing a common interest um, or just their identity as identity as the different identities that people share. Or it could be to engage in activities or set goals, especially when you start talking about dismantling racism. A lot of times an affinity space can be a place to conspire and also so share information and strategize to set goals around dismantling racism. An affinity space is a place, as we learned in the video, that people should feel comfortable, they should feel seen, they should feel heard, and they should feel understood. So why are these spaces necessary? As I mentioned, an affinity space feels like a safe space, or it should feel safe. And it should be a, a place where BIPOC community members are able to unpack racism, internalize oppression, and some of the harm 
harm that we experience on a daily, often a daily basis. And to talk about that trauma, it should be able to support who we are in our, our social identity, and it should foster a real sense of belonging. Uh, I know when I'm in affinity spaces, there's this warm feeling of being able to belong that I don't often feel in the outside world. Affinity spaces should also support collaboration and community building. It should provide a space to develop strategies for change, as I mentioned before, conspiring, sharing information, goal setting. That's part of why these spaces are necessary and feeling seen and heard is so important. Often I think it's hard to understand if you're not BIPOC, some of the experiences we have and the trauma that we carry on a daily basis and what these spaces provide for us is a place to not just unpack the trauma, but also develop strategies to mitigate that trauma we often experience in mid-race spaces. So often white folks ask questions about why they're not involved in affinity spaces. Some of the questions that we commonly get is, how about, can I just, I know I'm, I'm not BIPOC, can I attend? Can I just, you know, sit and listen and learn? I feel like this would be beneficial for me. Sometimes questions are a little defensive. Isn't this segregation or reverse racism? Or doesn't it just make sense for us all to meet together? These are great questions. And I'm glad that folks ask them. But what these questions do is it really illuminates the level of understanding or um, lack of understanding of how BIPOC folks experience the world due to systemic racism. And it provides an opportunity for white folks to delve a little bit deeper into what really goes on that BIPOC folks really need this space. So I think something for white folks to reflect on is what about this space feels uncomfortable for me if there is uncomfortable uh, feelings around it. But it is important to understand this is a place that is very, very necessary and very needed for folks of color to have that safe, welcoming sense of belonging in the space that many of us really, really need. So now that you've learned about BIPOC affinity spaces, I open it up for any further questions. If you want to learn more, you can reach out to myself or Casey. Our emails are right here below. We want to just thank you for spending time with us, learning with us, and we thank the PPAC program and specifically the BIPOC affinity space for helping to inform the context of this video and also other videos. You all have been wonderful and we look forward to working with you again. Thank you.